Our first proof of concept project was run between 2012 and 2014, and uh, we got two good years of data out of that that showed that we got equivalent pest management with this system in direct comparison with a uh, traditional air blast sprayer. Um, last year, we did some retrofitting, in part thinking about the future with cherries. The first thing we did, you might have noticed in the cherries that all the emitters were just plugged directly into irrigation lines. And so, as Greg mentioned, in a cherry canopy, that was very problematic because you have a large leaf that can block the emitters. So to counteract that, we, we uh, moved to another system where we put our emitters on spaghetti tubing. And so last year, we refit our apples um, so that we've got our emitters on spaghetti tubing, and they can be repositioned at will. So when you're doing your training or pruning, if, if you notice that a main scaffold is blocking something, you can simply move it over so it's not being blocked anymore. The original system works um, basically feeding and delivering chemical with um, water pumps. And so you, you charge the lines. There are stop drip devices on the lines that allow you to charge it without the emitters coming on. You then raise the pressure above those, those check valves and you get an application. It takes us somewhere between 12 and 15 seconds to put 100 gallons uh, of volume, spray volume on in a set. So it's, it's very, very rapid. After you've done that, we use an air compressor, and we've moved to a standalone diesel air compressor. This is a hydraulically actuated one, but we found that it really the standard air compressor works better. And uh, you use a low pressure air front to return anything that's still left in the lines um, back to your holding tank, and then you jack the pressure up once again to flush everything out, blow it all clean. So it's really a four-step pro process. Charge the lines, apply your spray, clean the lines, and then clear the lines. Um, our new concept turns it into a two-step um, operation, and I'll let Paul talk about that when we demo that. Um, but what it also does is it, it, it allows us to re greatly reduce the amount of chemical needed to fill the lines. One of the biggest engineering challenges we came across in our initial design is that you end up having to pump many gallons of, many hundreds of gallons of liquid into just your feeder lines to, to uh, get the liquid to where it needs to be to spray. Um, the new design, and I'll let Paul describe that after we run the, uh, our, our stage two design, um, does away with that essentially. Uh, the other exciting thing about uh, where we're headed is this project here, or this new concept, was born um, initially out of John Nye of Trickle Lee's irrigation. He came up with this idea to have canisters and canister fed systems. Um, <laughs> But we took it to the mechanical engineering department at, at Michigan State, and a group of students um, basically came up with an entirely new concept that we're now putting into to research. The initial project was funded by the USDA SCRI program, and we're waiting to hear about funding for a new for a, a, another round of this. And if we are funded, um, that project will largely focus on engineering. I have a team of engineers in mechanical engineering out of the, they basically work on fuel injector systems. We're going to be helping us optimize nozzles. Right now we're using all off-the-shelf irrigation nozzles, um, as well as the other operating components of the system. And then another major objective will be to develop automated fault detection. So, you know, what that would do is allow the grower or the applicator to know, okay, um, you know, 10 yards down, three rows in, I have a nozzle that's either over applying or under applying. So they know that a maintenance, you know, there's a maintenance issue that needs to be taken care of.